Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and to this special video. You'll notice that I'm not in my um, small apartment anymore, I'm not in my kitchen. I'm in another location and that's of course because I'm traveling over Christmas and the holidays. But I wanted to make this emergency broadcast anyway to tell you about the recent vulnerabilities that was discovered by a group of uh, hackers, if you will, but they were good hackers. Um, but And they, they found these vulnerabilities in the most popular hardware wallets that there are, the Trezor and the Ledger, and they presented those on stage at a conference. And now it has been shown to the world and to these companies that there are some serious uh, security concerns with these hardware wallets. And uh, I'm going to go through these, um, uh, these um, secu security issues in this video. And we're also going to talk about how you can secure your funds um, in regards to these issues that they found. And this is serious stuff because in some of these hacks, they actually managed to grab people's seed words out of their devices, which is something that these manufacturers tell us should be impossible. The seed words are kept securely in our devices, but that is shown not to be the case. So what are the different hacks that they managed to pull off? Well, there was multiple ones, and I'm going to go through the ones that I found most interesting. And the first thing that they noticed was that the actual box that these things come in, well, actually, the Tresor mainly has these uh, stickers uh, that you put on the box that you can't open the box without breaking the sticker. Um, so you can't actually open up the box, modify the hardware, and then put it back and reseal the box. But they found that wasn't the case. They could easily, well, easily, but it was very easy if you... Um, if you think about how much funds uh, came in these wallets, it wasn't uh, a big effort that was required in order to safely remove the sticker and then put it back on. I mean, you could open up the box, take out the device, put the device back in and reseal it. And the device wasn't, well, the box wasn't harmed while they did that. You can find all of this uh, in the video description uh, where I'll link to their actual findings and when they presented it so that you can see all these images for yourself. But that was the first vulnerability and the, and the other ones are built upon that uh, where it's actually easy to open up the box and modify the hardware and the software and then repackage it and resell it that is a big vulnerability but uh, the first actual hack that they did was that they managed to sign transactions without the user actually pressing the button because you'll know that the big deal with hardware wallet is that you actually need the user input in order to sign with your private key. You can't just do it on a computer. It's not just a software wallet where a hacker could have access to your computer and sign the transaction through there. You actually need a physical input. You need to press a button. They managed to go around that by actually modifying the hardware and implanting a small radio device that listened for incoming radio signals and then managed to, uh, to fire on this uh, hardware line, whatever you call it, that represents the yes button. So what they could do is that they modify the device, they could put it back in the box, sell it, and then if they knew who, who actually had it, they could grab a radio antenna, fire it at the device, and actually sign a transaction without the user pressing the button. And uh, even though it is, um, it requires a sophistication, of course, you need to modify the device hardware, and you need to have a radio, you need to fire it, but if you actually know someone who has billions or whatever dollars of Bitcoin on their hardware wallet, uh, you are motivated to actually find them, to modify their device, and to build this sort of radio apparatus. So that was the first hack. They managed to sign transactions without the user input. Really bad. The second was an actual bootloader vulnerability. And that means that they were able to actually install new software on the ledger in this case. So usually the way it should work is that only verified software should be allowed to be installed on these devices. Because if you can flash custom software, you could once again buy a hardware wallet, unpack the device uh, carefully, flash new software which you control, and then sell the device and take control of people's funds. And this is not supposed to, um, to be able to happen. Uh, there's a security chip inside of these devices that should verify the software but they managed to bypass this by a bug in the code and um, yeah they actually managed to install 
Snake on the Ledger Nano S, so they could play Snake by pressing the buttons, and there was a game playing on the display. But they could do anything, of course. They could install malicious code and take people's keys and all of that. And uh, the last thing that, they, that I found interesting, and that was really the largest hack, I would say, uh, was the fact that they actually could grab people's keys. No, not the keys, but the actual seed phrase from the Trezor. And this is uh, really dangerous because people buy these devices by the belief that their keys are safe. No one can take them out of these devices. It is completely sealed within this hardware device. But they actually managed to do that. And the loophole that they found was that, well, it was a bug in the actual firmware update process of the Tresor, where the Tresor actually backs up all of the data that is already on the Tresor, which includes the seed phrase. Because usually the seed phrase is stored in the flash memory. And no one from the outside have access to the flash memory. And they couldn't get access to that. But what happens when you update it is that it actually, even after the update is done, the seed phrase is still on the device. And the Tresor people managed to do that by, during the update procedure, they copy all of the data that is in the flash, which is not able to be read. They copy that into the RAM, which is able to be read. Then they update the firmware, and then they copy the data back from the RAM to the, uh, to the flash, and then they erase the RAM completely. And that means that after the actual flash, the actual uh, upgrade is done, the people can't find the seed. It is in the flash as it was in the beginning, and no one can read it. But if you manage to interrupt the upgrade procedure in the middle, that means that the seed words are now stored in the RAM memory, which can be read by anyone. And this was a big problem, of course. The hackers managed to find that, and they managed to get a dump of the RAM memory during this update procedure. And then they found that the, that the seed phrase was actually just stored as a string. So they could just read out the data and read the seed words right out of the string. And that is not a good design. They could even find the pin number. It was also there in plain text. The actual pin number that you use to, uh, to log into your Tresor. This was a big, big vulnerability. So how do you protect yourself against these three? Well, all of these three is uh, related to not having hardware access to your device at all time. All of these hacks require the hacker to gain hardware access to your device or to gain physical access to your device. So you want to make sure that you never leave your hardware wallet out of sight or that you keep it very, very safe. That is uh, number one, because then people can't install custom bootloaders. They can't actually uh, upgrade your firmware and they can't get access to your seed phrase, all of that. So as long as you always have hardware access to your device, you will be um, in the safe zone. The second issue is, of course, with the purchasing of these devices, that you always want to purchase them from trusted actors. You don't want to purchase them secondhand. You don't want to purchase them from custom or from retailers. You want to buy them from the manufacturer that you trust. And maybe you don't trust Tresor. Maybe you don't trust Ledger. Then you can't uh, buy their devices either. Maybe you feel that someone in these factories are modifying your device and shipping it with bad software. But most people trust these companies and the issue is that you buy them from random people off the street or from stores, from online, eBay, whatever. And people have opened up the device, modified the hardware, modified the software, and that is a big issue. So as long as you take those matters into account, you always have physical access to your device, never leave it unattended or keep it very, very safe in a, in a safe or somewhere else and you buy it from someone that you trust, then you should be safe. The third thing you can do in order to avoid the actual uh, extraction of the seed phrase that we talked about here is to use a passphrase in Tresor. So you can do this. I'm not 100% sure how you do it, but I'm sure you can Google it and find it on the Tresor website. You can actually have a custom passphrase that is required as well together with the seed phrase, and then this won't work. They won't be able to get the entire uh, seed phrase required. So that is what you should do if you have a Tresor. And if you don't, and you don't want a passphrase, make sure to always 
keep your hardware device uh, to yourself. Don't leave it to anyone else who might be able to open it up or upgrade the firmware. Um, then you are in real risk. So keep your coins safe, everyone. And please leave your comments here below what your thoughts are. If you, uh, if you know of any other vulnerabilities or how you should keep your coins safe. And also let me know, how do you store your coins? Do you have a Trezor? Do you have a Ledger? Do you have uh, hot storage, cold storage? Please let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well for more of these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.